así. I invite uh, Professor Asala to give us the opening prayer. Please, shall we, shall we pray? Shall we pray, please? Father, in the name of Jesus Christ, we want to thank you for the opportunity you've given us to be here this evening. Thank you for the journey message you granted all who traveled. And we thank you for all the organization in the university that you have affected to this point. Heavenly Father, we commend the program into your hands that you will lead us, you will guide us in it, that at the end, it will be seen to be successful and we will give the glory and honor to your name. Thank you, precious Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The Vice Chancellor, Professor Abrashi Na'ala, ably represented by the Deputy Vice Chancellor Academic, Professor Aisha Sani Mekudi, Our uh, inaugural lecture today is a special one. As you can see on the high table, I'll say we are having the visitor, ably represented by the Honorable Minister of State Education, Dr. Tonko Yusuf Shanunu. A round of applause for him. Like I said, this is going to be a very special inaugural lecture. This is the first time we're having a serving minister attending an inaugural lecture. <laughs> Among the important dignitaries I'm told we have with us here are from the villa and I have in progress. Dr. Kinsley Uzoma, Senior Special Assistant to the President on Agribusiness and Productivity Enhancement. <laughs> Maybe he's here to arrive. Alaji Gimba Kakanda, Senior Special Assistant to the President on Research and Anal Analytics. Alaji Nasir Yamama, Senior, Senior Special Assistant to the President on Innovation. <laughs> Dr. Uju Rochas Anuka, Special Assistant to the President on Public Health. I also have the singular honor and privilege to acknowledge the presence of the Honorable Minister of State Education, Dr. Yusuf, Tanko Yusuf Shanunu. Please a round of applause for him. <laughs> Sir, we feel highly honored to have you gracing this occasion. And like I said earlier, this is the first time we're having a serving minister attending our inaugural lecture. You are very much welcome. You can see from the list I've just announced, they are all from the villa. So this is a very special inaugural lecture. It's like the lecturer today has a very wide reach. And that is why it's able to attract very important dignitaries. I can see deans, directors, professors, heads of departments also present here. And a host of guests. Please, I'll do the acknowledgement as soon as I get the list. You are all welcome to the 44th inaugural lecture of the University of Abuja to be presented by a refined 
gentleman to the call, unassuming scholar of international repute, Professor Sunday Titus Ibuque. He is of the Department of Auto, Auto Rhino Laryngologist. <laughs> Please forgive me for that pronounce, pronunciation. They are often known and addressed as uh, Department of ENT, Ear, Nose, and Throat. Professor Sunday Ibikwe is a physician who studied and trained in the treatment of ear, nose, head, and neck. So today, inaugural lecture is going to be very interesting. As you can see, the topic is sound, wind, and whisper, a journey in search of harmony on, in auto laryngology. So I want you to pay special attention because at the end of the day, you all gain something because this one touches each and every one of us. Again, I welcome you. The lecture is going to be one hour. You have 50, 50 minutes to do your presentation, 10 minutes to do ac acknowledgement and salutation. And then the university orator, Professor Azuke McFassin, he will take us through the lives of Professor Sunday Titus Ibikwe. You have 10 minutes to do that. Please abridge the CV, uh, your citation. I will refer all other people here, listen, uh, guests and staff present here to go to WW Titus Ibuque. You'll get more of him there. So just be very, very uh, concise and precise. You know, a lot of our brothers and sisters are fasting. I want you to give them time to be able to go home and break their fast. I now have the singular honor and privilege to invite the Vice Chancellor for a brief remark. The Vice Chancellor. Um, the principal officers here present, the Honorable Minister of State for Education, Dr. Tonkwa Yusuf Shanunu. The distinguished inaugural lecturer, our special guests, members of Senate, provost, deans, directors, my dear colleagues and students, good afternoon. Please permit me to stand on, um, to stand on the existing protocol. Professor Titus Sunday Ibekwe stands as a beacon of academic excellence and dedication within our university community. With an illustrious career spanning decades, his commitment to scholarship and mentorship has left an indelible mark on both students and colleagues alike. As a scholar, Professor Ibekwe has consistently pushed the boundaries of knowledge in his field, producing groundbreaking research that has garnered international acclaim. His contributions have not only advanced the theoretical foundations of his discipline, but have also had tangible impacts on real world problems, demonstrating a rare ability to bridge the gap between academia and practical application. Beyond his impressive scholarly achievements, Professor Ibekwe is renowned for his unwavering dedication to teaching and mentorship. He approaches every lecture with enthusiasm and rigor, challenging students to think critically, and thus 
fostering an environment of intellectual curiosity. Countless students have been inspired by his passion for learning and his willingness to go above and beyond to ensure their success. In addition to his academic prowess, Professor Ibekwe is known for his humility and kindness. Always willing to lend a helping hand or offer words of encouragement to those in need. His generosity of spirit and genuine concern for the well-being of others has earned him the admiration and respect of the entire university community. In sum, Professor Ibekwe embodies the very best of our institution. A scholar of unparalleled intellect, a dedicated educator, and a compassionate mentor. His contributions to the university and the broader academic community are truly immeasurable. And we are incredibly fortunate to count him among our own at our great University of Abuja. I ask you all to please pay attention to some of Professor Ibekwe's important achievements. Thank you. I now invite uh, Professor Azuke McFassin to give us the citation of Professor Titus Ibikwe. The Vice Chancellor, ably represented by the DVC Academics, Professor Aisha, and your management team, uh, distinguished guest, short guest, the Minister for State Education, invited guests, ladies and gentlemen. This is a citation on Professor Titus Sunday Ibekwe. I thought the Vice Chancellor had done half of the work for me already. <laughs> uh, the 44th inaugural lecture with the title Sound, Wind, and Whisper, A Journey in Search for Harmony in Otorhinolaryngology. Vice Chancellor Star, constructing a citation on today's inaugural lecturer is a Herculean task of immense proportion. It is comparable to shrinking a legendary giant to human size, or perhaps clipping and pruning the flagellating phalanges of an octopus. Either of the two attempts surely draws top drawer perspiration from any orator. By the grace of God, I've made an attempt here to contain his personality and the reverberations of his sprawling accomplishments within the ambits of this presentation. Titus was the last of eight male and four female children of a polygamous family from Ezioha, Mbowo, of the local government area of Enugu State. Of his mother's five children, Titus was the last as well. Mr. Mrs. Pius and Agnes Ibekwe, though uneducated, we are great farmers and maintain the flourishing trade business. This enabled them to give their children a formidable education because they loved the education and believed that it was a great asset for their children's future. Of peculiar interest was the towering and enveloping presence of great King Ezoke, the great grandfather. He was a great warrior, greatly loved because he had lived an illustrious life in the community. At birth, the Susea had claimed that Titus was a reincarnation of the great king, Ezoke, who had announced earlier that he would return after death to the community. 
in his community, reincarnation was a sociocultural concomitant of each child's birth. And this belief held sway all through. So when Titus was born, the relation that heralded his birth was remarkably community-wide. The great king Ezoke had indeed been reborn. The Nigerian Civil War ended shortly after his birth. It was another prophecy foretold and fulfilled. Education. Prophecy Bekwe's relentless quest for knowledge and scholarship has traversed many citadels of learning, from his MBBS at the University of Nigeria, MPH, HPM at the University of Ibadan, MD, PhD, clinical audiology in Lyon at the University of Cape Town, culminating in the confirmation of innumerable fellowships, such as the following. Fellow, Nigerian Academy of Medicine. Fellow, West African College of Surgeons. Fellow, National Postgraduate Medical College of Nigeria. Fellow, International College of Surgeons. Professor Bekwe's research interest is solidly in the area of preventable stroke rehabilitative hearing loss and health policy and management. Importantly, his research in progress holds mouth-watering promises and potentials for the nation and medicine generally. Two of these are auditory impairment in sickle cell disease, SCD, and screening for early detection of laryngeal cancer. Publications, supervision, and other scholarly activities. Prof. Ibeque has been vibrant in the area of publications, both single and co-authored. At the last count, there are 100 papers to his credit in both international and local journals. <clears throat> he has also performed over 250 media health education programs and championed signing into law the Nigerian policy on EHC, Ear Healthcare, 2018. His research and collaborative tentacles are global and have garnered for him inimitable accolades from his peers and nations outside our shores. His bag of honors and awards is heavy and shoulders again, and recounting them here will be time consuming. Let me tease you with a few of these. Commendation by Joint Senate and Board for Outstanding Dedication and Professionalism in the Execution of Assigned Duties, 2023. The 2021 Golden and 2023 Silver Awards for Outstanding Research Staff of University of Abuja, Ambassador of Goodwill, American Academy of Otorhinolaryngology, African Leader of the Academy, Golden Heart Award, Jim Wobodo's Award for Best Research Graduating Fellow, West African College of uh, Surgeons, and several others. Many students have been supervised by Professor Bekwe, and many others are undergoing supervision under his watchful eyes. The headship of his department was under his care until recently, and he does not shake community responsibilities thrust upon him by the university on when national duty calls. He has participated in several medical missions and free health outreaches in Wabulada, Abuja, Ibado, your state. Prosigwe Ibekwe has matured into a consummate university administrator and scholar that this university is proud of. Family life. Prof. Ibekwe is happily married to Dr. Perpetua Uchechi, a dermatologist, and they are blessed with four children. Chino Nyerem, a fourth year medical student. Onyekachi, a second year software computer science student. Ike Chupu of Loyola Jesuit College and Ogechi of Gonzaga Jesuit College. Vice Chancellor, sir, I present to you an accomplished erudite scholar, a thoroughbred clinician, a rounded international doctor, a dependable mentor of candidates, and tested and trusted member of his faculty, Professor Titus Sunday Ibekwe, 
Professor of Otorhinolaryngology. Thank you for listening patiently. Mr. Vice Chancellor, sir, I now have the honor and privilege to invite Professor Titus Sunday Ibikwe to present his lecture. Prof. Good afternoon, my Vice Chancellor, Erudite Vice Chancellor, Digital Vice Chancellor, heavily represented by DVC Academics, the Principal Officers of the University, the Erudite and most respected audience here present, being led by none other than our Minister of Health, my brother and my friend, Honorable Dr. Tanko Sonono. Please permit me to go ahead with this lecture. Towards the end, there is provision to recognize all the dignitaries here present. The topic has been served, and what is left now is for us to coast through. Welcome to University of Abuja, the Citadel of Learning, National Unity. Welcome to, welcome to Collector's Item, known as University of Abuja Teaching Hospital. I wish to say that there is no disclosure to be made here, financial or otherwise, and no conflicts in the presentation. And we're going to go through this outline to make this presentation flow and easy for each and every one of us. We introduce and define concepts. Then we look at the genesis. How did this journey start? We search through the harmony in sound, wind, and whispers. Then we look at our contributions, globally and otherwise, and linkages to the university and to the greater population, and indeed our ongoing work. We make recommendations to the government, to the society, and to each and every one of us. We we'll conclude, and of course, appreciate you, the audience. What exactly is sound? I know that a lot of people have received so many calls regarding this topic, asking for explanation. And I indeed pleaded that they should wait for today to see what that means. Some asked me, have you veered into music? Are you now a poet? I say, all put together. That's what makes a real constructive person. But sound, so to say, is energy that is transmitted through media. This media could be solid, it could be liquid, it could be gas, as the case may be. But it really becomes sound when it could be perceived by human ears. And of course, one can say that it's just essentially a sequential vibratory waves that is detectable by the ear. And these waves called sound could be pleasant or unpleasant to the ear, depending on the features, which characterizes are always lying within the pressure, the intensity, and the loudness of the sound. If they are well organized, then it will be a sonorous sound to the ear that is pleasant. But when it is otherwise, it becomes a nuisance, otherwise called noise. Now, Sound could be perceived by human ear, either aided or unaided. And this depends on the functionality of the ear and also on the characteristics of the sound. If the wave lies between 20 and 20,000, then we say that it's within human normal ear perception. But if the wave is below 20, it is infrasonic and should not be heard by a normal ear. And if it goes beyond 20,000, we start talking of ultrasonic sound, which will be destructive to normal ear. 
and attempt to perceive. What exactly is wind? Wind is simply a emotion. But the components of this air is very important to human life, especially the oxygen, which we know is what keeps life. And I want to say that um, if one is stopped from breathing, within four minutes, the brain will go into simply a vegetable. And when sounds encounter obstacles, it will produce different forms of sound, which could be a pleasant one or unpleasant one, alien or a wind, as the case may be. And this is what we see for those that snores, is the same thing. So obstacle is being encountered due to redundant tissues and folds within the airway. They vibrate, they don't allow them to breathe well, and they're having problem with their sleeps. And when this is easily translated, you can see that there is a clear relationship between sound and wind. Now, how about whisper? Let me say that it's only human beings that can produce a real whisper because of the combination of what it takes to give a whisper. Because you must have a minimal vibration of the vocal cord, otherwise known as the voice box. And you should be able to control your breath at the same time to produce this um, whisper that we're talking about. So for you to succeed, you must be able to control both sound and wind. I hope it's connected now. We can see how sound is coming in, how wind is coming in, and at the same time, how whispers are being linked together. We know that whispers could be lovely one. It could also be destructive, because it's just simple whispers, negative whispers, that had led nations to war. And whispers had led individuals to getting married and giving birth to lovely children. So, thank you. So what is the essence of the combination of these three to what we are talking about today. You cannot perceive sound if you don't have ears. So the ear is linked to sound. That is to say, beyond just perceiving this sound, we know that the sound and hearing industry today, all combined together, has been able to provide jobs and billions and billions of dollars and naira across nations. Wind. Wind flow through the nose, in and out, is what keeps us alive. And as we said, four minutes can just make the difference. Whispers, this come from the truth. And with great act of being able to control your breath and also control the movement of the sound. So in essence, we can say that a comfortable life is only rich and achieved when these three elements are in harmony. That is to say, the quintessential of ear, nose, and truth specialty, otherwise known as otorhinolaryngology. The Vice Chancellor, sir, being represented by our Ebo DVC. Now, ladies and gentlemen, you're welcome to the story. I've just introduced the meal that is going to be served each and every one of us here this afternoon. In the past decades, as a professor, I have been searching thoroughly through how to provide harmony in these three areas. That led me to what I call need-based research in otorhinolaryngology. And what is this all about? Is looking for problems in the society, identifying them, and not just identifying them, but also providing solutions to them to improve life. So, let me call on each and every one of us, fasten your belt, it's time to move. This research, as I've said, has provided or given birth to over 100 publications, over 250 media advocacy, travels across countries and nations, friendship and collaborations, yet we are not done. So, the genesis, the beginning, this uh, young, innocent-looking lad over here is the speaker today. And that's where the journey started from. Yes, so I'll tell a very brief story to elucidate this. 
in a very serene society, beautiful society, beautiful town of Azun Kwandiabo, that is known to be filled with green lush and beautiful streams flowing. In the evening, it's all about sounds of crickets, meeting together, tales by moonlight. All this I enjoyed as a child. But there was an impediment, what the Igbos call Mbapia. Mbapia is simply tonsillitis. That's the only thing that will wrestle down this boisterous young man then. We're running around. That was what I was suffering every now and then. I know that um, my parents did their best. Each and every time, I was always given a cube of sugar soaked in liniment. For those of us that know what it is, this takes care of this problem, but just momentarily. And after a while, there will be recurrence. I recall vividly on one occasion that I was taken to one of the respected um, you know, um, towns healer. The name is Nai Azikinweri. I'm sure that my people here know the person I'm referring to. Very tall, huge man with gigantic fingers. He had to insert his index finger into my throat to press on the tonsils and pulse and blood gushed out. What did he receive in return? Some bites from me. And again, people around when he shouted, went into thunderous version saying, and you have done well. So after this, I got better, but the problem still persists until I had to be taken to these hunters, you know, wearing um, night hunters' uh, mirror, perforated in the middle, robed in white gown, sitting in front of lights, reflecting into ears, nose, and throat. That's the ENT surgeons. These are the first group of doctors I encountered as a child. And they did their, performed their own miraculous treatments with antibiotics and others. Yet the problem persisted. Not until this space of organs were removed, that tonsillectomy, that I knew this. And from that day, as a child, it was in my head that I want to be one of these great hunters of tonsils. <laughs> so right through my secondary school days, when we were asked what would you be, I would say I'll be a doctor, in fact, an ENT doctor. I would say, How do you, what is ENT all about? I said, that's my choice. Same persisted up to tertiary level when I entered the university, reading medicine. And it turned out that that was my best area, where I scored my highest marks. Some of my classmates are here. Dr. Agada, you testified to that. So even my roommates then, I used to tell them I would be an ENT surgeon. And that infected one of them, Professor Jones Mursu, who also turned to be an ENT surgeon. And during youth service, which is when people feel that is resting period, ladies and gentlemen, my vice chancellor, I braced the challenge to keep on withdrawing every evening, studying to write the first stage of that ENT exam. And during youth service, I was able to pass this that brought me to University College Hospital, Ibadan, from Oshobu, where I was serving. And over there, I met um, one tall gentleman who was the head of the department then. His name is no other than Professor O.G. B. Wong. Prof, please stand for recognition. He's here. That's my mentor. <laughs> Prof introduced me to every member of the department. This is your new resident, Titus. And when we finished, we withdrew to his office, and I just made a request. I said, sir, I'm interested in research, and I'm ready to perform any assignment that you give me towards this. He looked very deep into my eyes, a hot gaze, and said, no problem. And ladies and gentlemen, that is how the fortune changed. So I become a committed cell a foot soldier and the ground force in ENT, University College Hospital Ibadan. Over there, we won a lot of accolades. First two years into coming in there, I got the West African Health Organization Prize for the best paper presented by a resident doctor in West Africa in Kotoni, courtesy of this gentleman here. And um, my wife will recall very well 
There was a good monetary reward that accompanied this, $500. With that, we were able to buy generators and all those, and um, big boy syndrome don't enter town with that in usage. Eventually, I became the president of Association of Resident Doctors. Through the same channel of pursuing excellence in research, I floated the annals of Ibadan Postgraduate Medical Journal, which is today an international empowerment and one of the most performing journals in Nigeria. Thank you. Towards the end of our program, as the orator has already cited, our work turned out to be the best again in West Africa, and we got the Jim Wobodos Award. Now, our search for harmony in sound. Yeah, the first search led us to the development of a research tool, a big research tool, which today is being used worldwide. A video autoscope combined with image and geometric calculator, which helps you to analyze the tympanic membrane in real life and in real time, and also make calculations regarding the perforations there for research purposes. We're able to do this. And it led to a groundbreaking dissertation called Correlating the Size, Site, and Duration of Tympanic Membrane Perforation with Hearing Loss in Adults. And um, this won so many accolades. It earned me my fellowship in ORL Medical College. It earned me the Zimobodos Award earlier cited. It earned scholarship in UK, Austria, and Canada. It yielded four solid publications in one of our best journals. And these are the publications, all in public. Good. How does it work? So the image jet calculator with um, video autoscope, you are able to transmit the image as the um, tympanic membrane directly into your computer or into your set, as the case may be. Then we use what we call the TV card to do that. Then we use the analyzer, which is the calculator that was invented by, incidentally, my in-law, who is an engineer, um, Clement Chuhu. So we use that to do the calculation, and you'll be able to get the accurate perforation of tympanic membrane. And you can go ahead now and analyze the magnitude of the hearing loss and correlate this. That will help you in managing this patient efficiently and actively. So these are some of the images. You can see this rugged perforation here. It's not well shaped, but this system is capable of calculating. And what you can see below is the values. You can see it being traced out there, and then the entire tympanic membrane size. So from there, you're able to get accurate measure. I could say that this was fantastic, because today it's being used across the globe in research. And again, I was called in by British Academy to present this paper under scholarship. Well, what I want to narrate now is just lessons for the incoming researchers. I got there, I was able to meet with so many companies over there in the UK who also is trading on video autoscope. And they showed so much interest in what I presented. And one of them asked me to send them the details of this work so that we we'll partner together. I innocently did that. I never received any response, despite writing several times and asking them. Seven years later, the product was in the market. So the lesson here is you try and patent any innovative work that comes from you. Struggle to make sure that it's patented, because now you can fight back that there's no patents. The second in the search for sound is what is known as ear popper. This is quite interesting. A work done by my, by my mentor and myself, Professor Mwago, was taken by Professor Seelman and Emma of Brooklyn University. And they utilized this in constructing this um, ear popper. And they contacted us afterwards when they had been seen to be successful then offered to give us some free samples. I rejected this based on my previous experience and requested that 
we rather prefer to do a clinical trial on that with the obliged. The picture in focus right now, you can't see in the market. So this particular one is just purely for research and manufactured for that. They sent us seven copies, as I requested, which was distributed to the six geopolitical zone and Lagos for the purpose of this research. This is the one that you can easily get in the market. And what does it do? It's an amazing piece of instrument which you can use in treating otitis media with a fusion. That is fluid accumulation within the middle ear of children. Before now, you must perforate the eardrum to let out the fluid that accumulates in the ears of these children, which will prevent them from hearing. But of course, this comes with some difficulties. They won't be able to swim and do certain things they enjoy doing. But with the ear popper, it's just fixing the nose and it's capable of drawing the fluid from the eustachian tube through the throat. So, it didn't stop at that. When eventually um, we stumbled into COVID-19, we will talk more about, we were able to also find out that this could be very useful in the management of um, assisting those who have COVID-19 as a respirator, and we also published that paper. Now, the next search was into the world of Lassa fever. So, as a young consultant then, that moved from UCH Ibado to Irwa Specialist Hospital and Ambrose Ali University. Let me say that my Vice Chancellor Ambrose Ali University sent his son to come and represent him in this lecture. Please stand up for recognition, who is an orthopedic surgeon who flew in from Calabar. So, when we were there, we just noticed the Ravaging influence of Lassa fever is having on people within that locality. And that they are having sensory neural hearing losses of different magnitudes. We decided to go into research in this area, really dreaded area. This is actually a hemorrhagic fever that is transmitted by Mastomis natalensis. That's the name of the multi mammate rats that transmit this. And um, we went in to further investigate on the hearing loss for us to realize that, yes, um, in difference to what was known earlier on, that the sensory hearing loss only happens during the convalescent stage, we also find out that it could happen during the acute phase of the infection. And that was a turning point. We didn't stop at that. We went ahead to find out, actually, what exactly the pathogenesis of this hearing loss was all about which was pinned to us two things. One, we propounded that one pathway is autoimmune reactions, while the other one is direct invasion of cochlear hair cells. This paper published was so much, you know, um, attracted interest to so many people that Harvard keyed into what we are doing, same with New York Presbyterian Hospital. They sent us level three and level four materials, casings, to be able to harvest temporal bones of those who died of Lassa fever, so that more research could be done on this. As a neat researcher, we don't believe in just finding out problems and leaving it there. We went into looking at how we could help in solving this problem. Now, one was the investigative tool which then was only present in Irua Specialist Hospital and Lagos University Teaching Hospital. That's the polymerase chain reaction, real time testing. Now what was readily available was the serological test for IgM. So we went ahead to chart the course for the sensitivity and specificity of this method, which yielded 57 and 77% respectively obviously not quite adequate for this. But we realize that if this is combined with good clinical index, that is good enough for you to be able to make diagnosis. We didn't stop at that. We looked further for how to treat those who already have hearing loss or to prevent those who are infected from having 
serious hearing loss. Because then one of our medical students who was sent to Germany to have cochlear implant did not have anything successful. Reason being that Lassa fever also leads to calcification of the cochlea, which is the organ that you have to drill and implant the cochlear implant. So we went into research and we realized that revesterol, which is animal cholesterol, um, plant cholesterol rather, sorry, um, was very, very useful. And in lower animals, the work we did there was very, very prospective. And now we're progressing. I'm happy that even after several years out of Fidua Specialist Hospital, the management deemed it fit to bring me back to the national board that has been really formed so that we could continue with this research work. The representative of Yoruba Special Teaching Hospital is here. He could stand for recognition, the CMAC. The next search, still within the realm of sound, was noise pollution. Now, um, in 2014, 2016, when I was the chairman of Nigeria Medical Association, my voice is here smiling. Fatima Zara Merami, please stand for recognition. We decided to give back to the society and looked at what could we do as a team to help. And we realized that noise is becoming a nuisance. So we decided to map the noise level within Abuja municipality. And we successfully did that with our sound level meter, keep on taking these sounds day and night. Of course, then, there was nothing like this urgency. So no fear, even 12 midnights, we are coasting around Abuja, taking levels of sound. So at the end, the result was very revealing. That even as serene as Abuja appears to be, that the noise level in Abuja, especially during the day, was not in conformity with the acceptable level, according to World Health Organization. It was only the night level sound that was close to that, close to being OK. So we decided to make positive noise about this. We went to media, escalated a lot of you know, information on this, involved the, forming the populace, AIT channels, all the stations were all there. And we're happy that one year later, Lagos state government decided to propagate a law on this against noise. We said, fine, we have achieved something. But as a need researcher, we must find a solution. And the solution is that individuals should be able to monitor the noise level within their environment so that when it is too high, you know that you need to withdraw or adjust the sources of noise within to come to normal. The reason is because excessive noise leads to what we call noise-induced hearing loss. And I can say that this is hardly treatable, OK? So um, the tool that is used for doing this is what we call the sound level meter, which is very expensive. We managed to get one there for the research. So we looked for a way of making this easily available, searching for apps. We're able to evaluate several apps and came up with some that are very close, very accurate, that you can download freely and be able to monitor noise within your environment. So, we asked a question. Okay. We asked a question if Abuja was as bad as this, how about places like metropolitan cities like Kano, Onisha, Port Harcourt, and Lagos? So you can see, if you take a look here, you see our phone, why we're using it to monitor this noise level based on this free app. So go download your own today and monitor the noise around you. Beyond that, we realize that young individuals create a milieu for noise for themselves. What is called the earpiece is a problem because it completely seals the canal and all the noise, the sound is channeled directly into the ear and this destroys the ear. The one that is called the earphone is better, the cup, because it doesn't completely seal the ear. So this is wrong habit, information to be taken. This is correct. But everything in moderation, 
if you must use this earpiece intermittently, not for long. So, I want to take a look at this so that Okay. All work and no play. I enjoy a lot moving around beaches. I could see my boss, Taoban, smiling. He knows that. Okay. Now search for harmony in the wind. We are referring to the nose, the paranasal sinuses, and the nasopharynx here. Okay. So this organ is very important, is well centralized in the face, it defines beauty, and of course we know that it's important for exchange of air, breathing and breathing out. And um, it's just like a Pandora box, because there are some other complex connections, including the eustachian tube. First, we decided to take a look at some of the unusual cases that were performed in the nose. I'm sure Professor OGB will remember this vividly. In 2007, when we had this case before us, and um, when we looked at the features, I pleaded with him, Sir, please, can you pause, permit me to unscrub? Go pick my camera and come and take this, because this is very unusual. My boss obliged, and we did that. Lo and behold, it turned out to be um, a very rare tumor. A very rare tumor. Um, quite unusual, nasal teratoma, which was the third reported across the globe and the first in Africa then. And I was charged with the responsibility of writing the paper. And when I finished, my boss and Professor Akang said, Titus, you have to be the first author. And I became. So this defined the resilience that we have shared together, especially with my boss, OGB. We don't give up easily. And uh, I recall um, a nostalgic story when one of our grandfathers, uh, Professor G.T.A. Jadola, uh, called me and said, Son, um, I want you to go. I can see your star is shining out there. You're an international figure. That was when a lot of my teachers, senior colleagues and friends were pleading that I should be retained in UCH as a consultant. Probably by providence, I left. But there was no regret in leaving. But as God does his things, some years later, exactly 10 years after, I was appointed in the board of management of UCH Ibadan. And of course, you have to be an all-rounder, an administrator, and perform. So we did excellent job. We propagated a lot of law. We changed a lot of positive things. This board also sent me to be their representative, University of Ibadan, Governing Council. So just last year, um, following the extant rules, we are, we are, you know, um, we are asked to leave the system because our time was up. You know, so that was the spirit behind all we do as ENT surgeons and ENT family. And seated beside Professor Nwogo, is Professor Nwogo's mentor, Professor B.C.A. Zanolwe. So, the grand teacher is also here from the University of Nigeria. Paul, oh, please stand up for recognition. Thank you very much. So, that is the beautiful story. We kept moving, but one that is so interesting is that we stumbled into an unusual period, an unusual situation, which is none other than during the COVID period. Every researcher across the globe was being asked then to make sure that they perform dutifully to ensure that they are performing. And 
presenting things that will help in resolving problems. We didn't fold our hands. So we went into search for how to resolve some of these problems. And then we come up with a paper that was known as Disease of Equal Opportunity, Nature and Nurture. And this became like a mantra because it almost completely defined what COVID-19 was all about. It was Disease of Equal Opportunity because anybody could get infected in the process. It affects nature. It affects people's livelihood at the same time. So we proceeded and um, I considered my team of researchers, some of them are here, we went into COVID research. Suffice to say that we are the first that published a paper two months before WHO came to accept that um, loss of sense of smell could be seen as one of the red flags for COVID-19. Because following our close study to this, we come up with that. And we're not surprised two months later when this pronouncement was made. We're able to bring about the telemedicine in our department for monitoring. We designed the first questionnaire that for self-assessment of those who have COVID-19 that took us into the lion den to go and assess them, both from University College Hospital Ibado and University of Abuja Teaching Hospital. Well, sometimes the hunter becomes the hunted. I got infected in the process, but we didn't stop. Even while within admission for these six weeks, that was when I stumbled into my vice chancellor there, who was also with me. I call him the meritocracy vice chancellor, none other than Nuhu Yaku. He promised to be here. If he has not arrived, he must be on his way. Recording in progress. And we worked together, put it together, brought up ideas. You know, at the end of the day, we're able to float an NGO to help people who are suffering from these problems. IT, are we there? Please, beam so that we continue. So, we're able to do this. So, Foundation for the Sick and Health Education was born, which has helped so many who had that COVID-19, donating to them drugs, equipment, and all those. And we're not done, and we're still moving. So, um, that's the journey with the nose. The final journey is with the, with the throat, which we call the whispers. All right? Recall the story I told about the mbapia, which was my problem then. We decided that we must find a solution to that. So we went ahead, read so many books on tonsils, tonsillitis, the methods of treatment, and lo and behold, we came up with brilliant ideas of modifying the method of doing the tonsillectomy, to what we call the vasoconstrictive hydrolytic dissection method. By far, this helps in a lot of ways to mitigate some of the complications, common complications, especially bleeding that usually come with this. And I can tell us that over 1,000 that we have done, there has not been any complication that is so severe and serious about this. Um, my boss is here present. Uh, Dr. Ibrahim Wada, OON, Dr. Onu, and others who testified to this. And indeed, people from my department, Dr. Dahilo, and others. And today, we're happy to say that this particular procedure has gone beyond our shores. It's been widely used in Ghana, in the Gambia, in Senegal, and in faraway countries far and wide because of the usefulness of um, that method and procedure being used. Now we're able to deal with some very difficult cases, you know, looking at um, the nose. Some of those difficult cases we handled then um, included a six-year-old child that was brought in obvious respiratory distress, you know, and um, the parents claimed that the child swallowed a piece of glass. That was quite absurd. We went in and did esophagoscopy. This glass was removed, and we realized that it was a piece of mirror. And that was why it was radio opaque, because the, um, please, move on that slide to, to that left. Keep on moving until you get to where I am, so they will understand that. And your system here, people in the high table, they are not seeing. So please make sure it's functional. So this made it so easy, because 
This material on the reverse surface was coated with silvery image, which now helped in projecting it as a radioactive substance. So it gave us an idea. We said, wow. That means that if you have to mark every tiny toy that is capable of being inserted or inhaled by a child or by anybody, that it will be easily marked out radiologically and help in diagnosis. And we went on with that advocacy based on that case. The other one was a 35-year-old woman who presented with fishbone in the airway. Asked me how did the fishbone leave the airway to leave the food passage to enter the airway. Obviously, she was talking and at the same time eating. So the lesson there is please don't talk while you're eating. It doesn't make you more civilized than others.